Hello, it's Weekend Handicapper. In this video, we're going to continue our series on how to read the Brisnet past performances, ultimate past performances, to be more specific, with comments. If you hadn't watched my other two previous videos, or three pre previous videos, I should say, look in that link above in the screen here. And that way you can click on that playlist and get up to par on, on what we've been doing so far this should be the last one where we do an overview of the the entire race in this particular race, race nine at Churchill Downs, the Goldenrod. But in future videos, I'll in more in depth talk about some of these like speed figures more in detail. But this would be the last in the series of just the bare bones, basic how to understand and get a grasp on past performances. So if you hadn't watched the other videos leading up to this, I'd encourage you to please do. If you have, if you have been following along, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for devoting so much time to these watching these videos. Hopefully it's helping you out. But we're at the point where we're going to start picking our contenders in this race. In part three of this video series, we went through the entire field and looked at our the horses in the race. But this particular video in this series, we are going to look at what's called track bias stats. It's part of the Brisnet Ultimate Past Performances. And remember, they're available to anybody that's a Twin Spires account holder, Keeneland Select holder, as long as you wager on that particular card that you download. I'll put a link in the description below on... Um, in the video description below and that way if you're not a twin spires member you could click on that and get signed up and then that way you can have access to all these wonderful products that brisnet has all right so this is track bias stats it's one thing to see the different contenders of a horse race who's in the horse race on paper yeah they look good maybe look good maybe look bad but in my mind that's only half of our work right there i'm a huge what's called pace handicapper i love trying to predict how they're going to run in the race as far as the pace who's going to get the early lead i mean speed horses and how that factors into the overall track profile and the and the distance and what post positions are winning that sort of thing those are are another added layer to handicapping in my opinion and so this these track bias stats are extremely helpful in my opinion when it comes to that uh, what you see up here this is the number of races at the, right here with the the different class level and who who's it for this as far as favorites are concerned 42 percent of the favorites have won in, the, in these particular kinds of races. 73% have finished in the money. So you might be thinking, oh, wow, all I got to do is bet a bet the favorite to show in the race and I should have a 73% chance of cashing a ticket. That's true, but look at this. You're going to be losing your, your money because your return on investment, that's what ROI stands for, it's not too good for a $2 bet. So that's why it's it's very dangerous to bet show, especially favorites, or show it at any time, in my opinion. It's very hard to make money betting show. But this shows you how well favorites do, do in this race. So in horse racing, 42% win percentage is really, really good. So that's something you have to factor in. doesn't mean you should bet the favorite, but that – means you know you could potentially skip the race because a favorite has a heck of a chance of winning and it and you need to look for a race that provides some value this is the average field size this is the average or median win payoff for a two dollar bet so it's 720 this i'll use this quite a bit i like this they show you 62 percent of the time if the horse that wins is usually five to one or below. So 
this if you're looking for a long shot this is isn't the race necessarily that it, you know according to the data that you would find it in uh, 19% between these odds 5 to 1 to 10 to 1 and anything above 10 to 1 is also 19% so if you think you can find a price then this is about even so it's just if you like a horse that's 10 to 1 or more you got just as good a chance as it was if it was 5 to 1 or 6 to 1 so that's good because a lot of times when I'm handicapping you, you might see this number being really high which means historically speaking long shots have a good chance of winning or this won't be as high this number might be 20 30 percent so based on the data and races that have been run before at this this certain race it might be worth your gamble to take a shot at a price so i use that quite a bit i love this right here i love these track bias stats so basically what what this is saying is for the meet the meet totals, there's been 48 races, 31% have won, have wired the field. Basically, he's got out there to the early lead. Horses that get out to the early lead and stayed out there 31% of the time. And horse racing, that's pretty good, you know, that that's not too bad. Uh, so if when we start looking for early speed horses, that might be another factor to consider. Speed bias, so 52%. So basically what that means, that's the percentage of races that have been won by either this type, the early speed type, or the early presser speed type. So 52%. So if you like a horse that is either this letter by, by its name, so an early speed horse or an EP, that means you have a pretty good chance of winning because those horses do really well. This, again, is the meet. This is the winning average beaten links is what that refers to. So that's the average beaten length at the first call and the second call. That's where the winner has been at when it's it's been racing at this distance, at this particular track, at this class level. So I love this data. I think it's really valuable. It really helps me out, especially if you're a, a pace handicapper. It puts a lot of emphasis on how the race is going to be run. All right, so this is run style. So I kind of alluded to this just a second ago. Early speed horses. Early speed have won 38% of the time. The This number's... They quantify it, and any any time it's above a one, that's pretty good. So that's another, you know, advantage. So that's basically, you know, it's a it kind of takes can, in, into account the running style, post position, that sort of thing. But just remember, the higher this number, the better. So again, this is showing that probably early speed horses have a pretty good chance and they've won 38 percent of the time anything above one, one is pretty good so keep that in mind uh post bias so a lot of handicappers pay pick you know put a lot of emphasis on the post positions so in this one we don't see too much of a bias for the meat remember we're just looking at the meat right now the meat is when a track starts racing or a season, let's say, if you're not too familiar what meat under, you know, it's just like a season in football or s season in uh, any sport. So this meet has been run from October 27th to November 28th so far. So that's, that's what that means. I apologize if most of y'all know that, but we might have some people just brand new to horse race and just learn it. But the post bias, so post Either on the rail, 13%. They've won 13% time. Uh, inside post, 1 to 3, 14%. 4 to 7, 
So as the meet has gone along, and then eight, eight or plus, so eight, nine, ten post positions, so on and so forth, only 3%. So as the meet has occurred, this is pretty even. There's no really big advantage there. I mean, maybe you don't want to be on the extreme outside as far as the meet goes. So all this pertains to the meet. Now, over here, if you're into track biases and you believe in track biases, let's look at the week total. So this is what's been going on this week in between these dates. There's been 11 races run at this distance. They have wired the field 27% of the time, which is a little bit down from 31%. But let's look further. Look at this early speed. 45% have won from the early speed that have had the early speed running style. Uh, there has been this, 36%, have been closers. So, so basically early speed is E, early presser is EP, late speed or presser style is what the P is, and then basically that's a sustainer or closer. Most people call it closer, uh, the S. But this is, they're either going to win from the beginning, early speed, or they're going to close in if you believe in track bias. And there's 11 races that we can go on, which is a lot smaller sample size than 48 races to go on. So I, I use that. So as we're looking here, we can see that if you if the only handicapping you do is if you look for an early speed horse on the inside, because as to where as opposed to where this was pretty even all around, with the exception of being on the outside, you had just as good a chance of winning no matter where you were, post position wise. But this is different. So look at this recent track bias. So inside, either on the rail or post positions one through three, is probably where you want to be at, especially if you're an early speed horse. So this is why this is so valuable, in my opinion. I, th I think you can really isolate some horses just based on the pace alone. Does it always work? Of course not. But this it, it's been shown to work enough especially if, you, if you're disciplined with your money and your bets where you can patiently wait on horses that return a lot as far as value goes and then aren't, you know, what everybody else sees, then you could be rewarded pretty uh, handsomely. All right, so here's the race summary. So what we just looked at was the, trace, uh, the track biased about their running styles. Now, if we want to, if we want to just reiterate, forgive me while I scroll all the way back up here. These are those running styles. So there we go. So the E8 and 8 means that horse, <clears throat> the higher that number, the, the more of a speed horse it is. Uh, this is a presser. Okay. So remember, we want to look for, according to that track bias profile, early speed horses or early and slash presser horses. Particularly on the inside, they might have an advantage. So that's how that is. So you just remember when you look at your horse, keep in mind this. But what I do is I scroll down here back to our race summary stats. And you'll see all of them right here. So the, they put them all right there together. So as we see at a glance, number one and number six should be your early speed horses. So those two should be going out to the lead, early lead, on their own if all goes well. Uh, you have only two early presser horses. That's the three and the four. So they, if <laughs> if it plays according to on paper, that it, it you know it, no, there's no guarantee it will, but on average it usually is pretty formful. Uh, they should be sitting, three and four should be sitting right behind one and six. And then you have a whole wall of horses, five, eight, seven, two. 
that are going to be sitting behind them. Now, so when you start pace handicapping, you want to look for like these numbers. So these numbers are those par numbers, which I kind of alluded to before. And then remember, I'll do future videos more in detail about these kind of numbers, but these numbers right here. So 88, 92, 87, that's your early speed. That's your second call. That's your late speed right there. Uh, so you want to see if your horse stacks up to those particular numbers. So let's take number one, for instance. So we got an 88, a 92, and an 87. Let's scroll down here. So as you see, that one's <laughs> doing all right as far as especially early speed. All right, so that's what that is, a morning line, medication. Look at that. Everybody's on Lasix. That's been a controversial thing in horse racing, but pretty much every horse uses it. Days since last race is what this means. So this how many days has been. So most of them coming in pretty good. They hadn't had too many, too big of a layoff. These are the most recent right here. So they've only – last time they raced, this one's 21 days ago, 22 days so you probably get that and you understand that. Average race rating. So this is basically like class or how tough the race was. Uh, so one in six have been in some pretty good races. So as number five. So if you believe in like class and how hard a race was or how tough the race, you know, the horse is coming out, uh, maybe factor that in. Number seven hasn't been in as tough as races. And so is number three as – you know, you won six and number five. So there's all kinds of ways to win a horse race. So whether you believe in pace or class or how tough the races are, speed figures, you could you could find proof of for your arguments pretty much in anything. Uh, so best, these are like the best numbers, pace numbers that each horse has got. Uh, speed right there. So this goes back to races back uh average class level so as you see this number one horse has been facing better class or a tougher class with number six and five and usually that's going to be consistent this number with this race rating so and when i mean consistent usually the same horses uh, are going to score high high in those categories uh so the Right there is like your speed average. So if you're a believer in speed figures, there's proof whether or not your horse is or isn't a contender based on speed figures and how well they've been doing recently on the average. Uh, let's see, mud. So it could be a sloppy track. As we saw in a previous video, see this right here? That's the forecast. So it could be raining that day. Um, so if you're a big proponent or believer in mud stats, you want to look there and see who might like the track, who might not like the track. Um, you know, to each their own on that. I guess it's another thing to factor in. But in my opinion, a good horse is going to run no matter what. I loved Wise Dan. There was a horse called Wise Dan. Some of you might remember that horse could run on anything. It didn't matter what surface it was. It could be a parking lot, you know, grass, synthetic. Wise Dan showed up muddy. I remember on Derby Day having that horse, and I guess it was what, 2008, 2009, somewhere around there. And, uh, yeah, it was nasty, sloppy track. Wise Dan took care of business on that one, too. On that surface – Two. So, all right. So, we're getting there. We're getting there, folks. We're, we're almost at the time to pick some winners and put it all together. Uh, but real quick, speed last race. You can see who has the speed in the last race. So, number uh, six had a good speed last race. Finite, which is the heavy favorite, the number one horse. Uh, back speed, that means historically what kind of speed it's had. And that's what we probably want in this race. If we're looking for a winner is – Somebody to get out to the front and have some good speed. Current class level, we kind of talked about that. Um, 
who the good horses are, and that would be one, five, or excuse me, one, six, and I think we said five, yeah, Lady Glamour. If I didn't know, just scroll right up here. There's your post positions. So those are, if class-wise, these are the horses. Uh, prime pa power, so that's a special number. I'll do a particular video on prime power number, how they calculate that. Uh, but this, after you put everything together, this is what they're thinking. Finite, of course, that's your heavy favorite. Bean, which is number four, uh, number six, and number eight. So if you believe in those prime power numbers, that'd be a way. I know some guys that just, they just look, like <laughs> they just look right here. And they bet some of those horses or box these in as actas. Uh, the danger of that is, yeah, you're probably going to cash a lot, but you got to check the prices and the odds and the payouts for that to be a viable strategy in the long term. Uh, this is class rating. that We just saw that at the very bottom. But these are your classier horses, according to Brisnet. Uh, best speed at distance. So if you start seeing some common um horses then maybe include them so we know finite's the probably on paper the best horse it's you know it's two it's one twice came in second twice it's got a class edge uh it's early so and this is one of the reasons that i want to make this video so we so basically think about this we saw we just saw with the track bias stats that it Inside historically during this meet, early you know inside post early speed, it has been advantageous even more so here lately. And so when you have that going for you, an early speed horse on the inside that's also a really good horse trained by a good trainer, a good jockey, especially when those two team up. Uh, I mean, it's going to be hard to beat. That's why this horse is 7-5 to five morning line. But if you're a, a track bias player, a pace player, well, maybe use those horses on the inside or at least use the ones that are early speed. Um, too. So what I'm saying is, here we go. If Now we get to the point where we're looking for the contenders in this race. With whether or not you use the prime power numbers or class, you, you start seeing some common ones. You see the six a lot. You, of course, the five, or excuse me, the one. Uh, five's got some class. So you, if you put all those together, maybe you'll find some prices. But, uh, so how would I play this race? Well, well one, I'm, I don't like two-year-olds. You hear me say this in videos all the time. I like to watch them. I like to keep track of them and see how they progress. But I want some more races under the belt. But I didn't do all these videos just to say I'm going to skip this race. So here's what I'm thinking. Number one has got everything going for it. It's a good horse, got the good connections. It's proven itself on the track. It's got four races. Only thing that's missing really is – it hasn't raced at today's distance, a mile and the 16th. But I, hey, this horse was running six and a half on the turf and one, a mile on the dirt and one, blew him away. So, I mean, it, it, good luck trying to beat this horse, in my opinion, especially when you factor in the inside post. Its running style matches what the, the track uh, bias stats say. Uh, so, I, I, I'm not going to. If that, when we go to look at this race, and if that odds is anything like that, as far as win bets go, I'm going to skip it. But I'm not going to, if you're, sometimes you feel so good about a horse, not saying I do about this horse, but sometimes you feel so confident in the horse, and then other people feel just as confident, you try to find value underneath. So whether that's exactus, superfectus, trifectus, whatever you play. So I would say since I don't think I could beat this horse with another horse, let's try to see what the exactus are paying or who, who can we hook up in exactus. Well, 
Number two, I'm just going by on the fact that these inside post positions might be where you want to be. This running style is probably not the best on the inside, but if this horse improves, it's on a two-race winning streak, I'd feel foolish if that exacta paid, you know, 15, 20 bucks. Me personally, I don't typically bet any exacta that pays less than a ten dollars for a dollar bet so it, we got to look at the payouts on on these exactas but i would feel horrible if my horse that i was confident in number one finite won, and some horse that had a two race winning streak came in second and i didn't have that exacta because it clearly showed that the inside is where you want to be the running style wasn't the best, but I would include that horse there. Uh, she Can't Sing does have a, see this E slash P running style? And it's on the inside. It's one last time out by a mile, seven and a quarter lengths. I'd feel bad if I left that one out. It all depends on the price if I'm looking at exactas. If, if I thought this horse might have a chance to be in the exacta, but if it only paid $8, then I ain't going to do it. It's just not worth it. I'll wait on a race that will pay, uh, give me more bang for my buck or more return value. Uh, this was that interesting horse. Uh, it's another early presser, which, according to the track bias, is what you want. It's never raced a route, so that's a red flag. Uh, last time, lost his rider, but all the other times has been sort of um, – competitive was well, was one and came in second i, I would it's a no-brainer me saying the sort of competitive so i would include that one if the price is right as far as his act is to go this one was a mysterious horse that i'm intrigued by uh i like i said in the previous video part three of this series i'm not familiar with these connections but they've been doing pretty good uh this horse has won second time. It's, it's been competitive, won twice, and came in second and third, and it got eased two races back. That's why you see that blank right there. Uh, it's raced at Churchill, came in second. At 12 to 1, who knows what the odds are going to be at post time, but I would include that one if I, if I enjoyed or if I was that confident in number one. To me, this is the threat. If if number one gets beat, it's probably because this one got out to the front, too. On paper, it looks like just two early speed horses, the one and number six, his glory. Uh, it's one at the distance, one at Churchill. So unless it doesn't like the track, it, I would think this factors in, but I'm also afraid that this, I don't think you could beat number one, first of all. If you put this one underneath in a exact, it's it's seven to two morning line. This is probably what everybody sees, just like I see. They probably will look at something like this and and see that these are the two best horses, pretty much class wise, the two early speeds. So it could be just between those two, and that's why handicapping's one thing and betting's another. This is probably either way you go in a exact is one over the six or six with the one. Everybody's probably going to, that's probably going to be the most played exact combinations in this race. And I don't want no part of it unless it pays more than over $10 for a dollar, which I would assume it's highly likely with your two most logical horses there. Uh, but it's up to you whether or not you include number six. I would think that's the most logical combination you can do. It might come down to these two. Um, but horse racing isn't logical sometimes, most of the time, really. And you want to get paid when chaos ensues or the illogical happens. But definitely number six is a contender. I didn't like number seven, even though it's one last time out. But these speed figures is far below um, what's probably needed here. And number eight was intriguing. If I go... We, we we saw that these track bias stats, like it, you don't want to be eight or plus, right? But remember, this is just for winners. This is what this kind of 
is keeping track of just for winners. Doesn't mean this horse can't come in second, third, in his actas or trifectas. It's been competitive. This is really interesting. I mean, it's got some, th these speed figures ain't no joke. You know, 91 and 95, what's our par on this race here? Yeah, 92. So if I scroll through, I can either do this. I could see what everybody else is. Remember that horse had 91 and 90, was it 95 or something? Speed figure. So this, of course, the heavy favorites got some nice speed figures. Let's, so what we're, what I'm looking at is anybody that even came close to 90. All right, number four did with this 97. Wow, that's pretty good. Let's see. All right, his glory, but we we already said that that was the other logical contender. So, yeah, think about that. There's only about two or three horses, three horses, matter of fact, I'm pretty sure. The one, the four, well, this would be the fourth horse. The one, the four, the six, and the eight has these kind of speed figures. So even though the post position is probably not ideal, running style is not ideal, what I, my mind, so here, here's how I think when it comes to handicapping. My mind's already made up that the one is probably going to win. If that doesn't win, probably the six, but you're not going to have much value. If you're a track bias player, maybe play the two or three as a win bet. But I don't think, I'm not even going full with anybody trying to beat the one because I think it's a pretty standout, chalky, uh, well deserved morning line favorite. Probably going to be heavy favorite post time. But that doesn't mean. So, so my mind goes from win bet to, all right, I can't beat the one. How can I prove the odds on the one and the payout on the one? Well, that's when I start looking for prices underneath. Now, morning line is five to one. So other people might be seeing the same thing. And this is act that don't pay anything. So track bias it doesn't look like the eight has a, sh a shot to win because it's on the outside and it's got a pressing style, running style. So this is that horse. And so win bets, that might be a no-go. Well, it is going to be a no-go in my opinion. But that doesn't mean I can't, if the price is right, if the payout's right, it doesn't mean I can't put it underneath. So here's what I'm thinking if I were to bet this race, so I, I so you got you got the handicapping part and your betting part. The handicapping part, you would say, all right, the one, the six, whether or not you look at this and decipher this, or you go up here and and see it right here. The one, the six, are your most logical. The pace is going to pl probably play out. Of course, the four is pretty good because it's sort of near the inside and it's got a nice running style. And it's got one of them higher speed figures there. Um, if you're playing track bias, include the two, the three. So, so far, we got the one over the two, the three, the four. This five is intriguing at this price. So, maybe include the five, of course, the six. But if it's not offering value, because if so, look at that. We, we pretty much got every horse underneath this one so far. And that's why price and payout's going to uh, factor in a lot. Because if this is paying six dollars, eight dollars for a dollar, then I'm not going to include it. Yeah, probably that's the most logical one, but that's all right. You know, if the ticket's going to cost me five or six bucks, why would I bet a exacta that allows me to break even or get my money back? To me, that don't mean no sense. I want to profit on my races. I don't like this horse at all, so I'm going to leave that out. So and then we got the eight, which with those speed figures coming in first and second, I think might as well include this horse. Why wouldn't I include this horse if, if the payout was all right, just as much as I would include anything else in the exacta spot. So when I put all this together, these track bias stats, the race summary, uh, the post positions, the pace scenario, I think the number one should be your winner, but it won't pay much. So then I go from, all right, I can't bet a win bet here if I'm going to play this race. 
where's the, my value comes underneath. So I would put the one, so I'd play an exact the one over the two, the three, the four, <laughs> the five, the six, and the eight. Some of you would be like, might as well include the one, which that's a good strategy. The all but one have has screwed me plenty of times, and I, in my mind, I can vividly remember those that knocked me out of a nice payout because of I didn't I was too cheap to just include one more horse. Uh, but we might not bet the one in the six because it might not pay much, and you might not bet the one in the four because it might not pay much. So that's. So it might not be that uh, costly. Now, a good strategy, so basically what I just b described to you, I basically had the one horse and wielded over almost all but one, the seven horse. And, you know, I learned that from Steve Davidowitz, rest in peace, peace. He just passed away not too long ago. He wrote this wonderful book, Betting on Thoroughbreds for the 20th century and then he then they updated it for the 21st century i'll put a link to the book in the description below but i i learned a lot from that book you know 20 years ago or something when i was first learning uh, especially when it came to wagering strategies that's my favorite part i think anybody can eventually pick out the logical contenders of a race but be able to creatively bet them and put them in combinations and scenarios where you can actually make money. That's an art that that's, if you can learn how to do that, then you're, you're, you will make some money at this game for sure. But in that book, it's basically you're willing the whole field underneath a horse that you like Ideally, you don't want it to be seven to five or your morning line favorite like finite is. But, and then you would put different increments on different scenarios. So say, like we've been saying, the one over the six, that's going to be a probably the most common exact combination. Well, you don't bet $1 or $2 like you do every other horse in that race. So you would put more money on that particular combination or one in four. So that's what I would think. If I was to bet this race, I would put the one. I wouldn't put a win bet on it. I would put one in exactas over pretty much the whole field except the seven. I would think if track bias plays out, the one, two, the one over the two, three, four would be the way the angle to go with that. I'm curious to see what the one and four would pay. And then... I think that probably would pay pretty good. I think that might offer some value. And maybe the eight would offer some value. Maybe. I don't know. With that 91, 95. We'll see the payouts. But uh, So the final, if I was going to the window or if I was on at home, logged on to Twin Spires or whatever you use, I would bet the exact combination one, over or one with the two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Or <laughs> leave out one horse. But I would I would definitely if that one and six didn't pay much, the one and four didn't pay much, I would leave it out, take my chances with the one over the two, three, five, and eight would be the way to go. All right, so hopefully this has helped you out. All these videos, remember, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get more in detail about class or speed ratings and speed figures and how to decipher these more in depth and detail because I want to do them justice because I think they, they, are that important. All right, so here we go. We are got to the point where we're actually gonna see. Who won this race? So let's go to Twin Spires. Let's look at the race nine. Right here, race nine at Churchill. So this was the post time. And this is the golden rod. So let's see if our work has paid off. It looks like it's a sloppy track like the rain forecast indicated. Weatherman was right. The meteorologist was right. Let's see if we can come close to being right. So what 
We're looking for are a few things. How these early post positions, how they fare, how this heavy favorite, how well it does. We should see the one and six get out to the early lead. And we're going to see if our Azactas come in, if the early speed holds up or off the pace comes through, we'll, we'll see. But it all, as far as my bet goes, we need this horse, the number one finite to win. And we either need this horse, the two, pretty much all these horses except this seven to win. Saved a couple of bucks, but I might be regretting it. So here we go. All right, so we predicted the one and six would get out to the early lead. And the four would be hanging back a little bit, but look at that. Looks like the four is getting out there the early, trying to steal it on the front end because that jockey and maybe the trainer is thinking, hey, if you get out on the front end, you're probably going to win. So there's that five. Look at that, 25 to one. That'd be nice. There's our heavy favorite. Ooh, went off the four to five. Yep. That's why I don't bet that win bet on that heavy favorite, something like that. So we predicted the one and six to be in the early lead together. They're actually third and fourth. So we were wrong about that. Or I was, excuse me, I shouldn't say y'all were. You probably might have had a difference of opinion. The force still hanging in there with a big long shot. There's that one making its move right there. Heavy favorite making its move. Well, the six really didn't do much. You see that a lot with early speed horses. If they don't get out too early, they kind of quit. Look at that. Who's that? Oh, that's, that's the eight. Eight just made a nice move. Eight's the danger here. That heavy favor better get his act together. Look at his building his head all looking at the stands. Yeah, you better get going, one. Oh, eight went off 13. Morning line, five to one, I think, or six to one. Went off at 13 to one. Hang in there, one. All right, so one, eight, five, three, and two, I think it was. Look at that four. Four got out to early, didn't last. There's the seven I left out. The only one I left out came in last, so that's good. Let's see these odds. So four to five, of course, was the heavy favorite. Um, the eight, I think that, uh, wow, that offered value there because it was morning line like five to one, I think, and went off twice that, almost a lot more than, man. So the eight ran a good race. Now, we talked about, track bias i thought besides the one let's take the one out of the out of the equation because the, the one who knows if it was in the fifth post position it might have won because it might just be that good a horse so you got to take track bias with a grain of salt i would have thought the two and the three would have did better especially the three even though it's high odds but i thought it would have been out there on the lead in that inside post would have uh been advantageous to it so it was a sloppy track so maybe if you like the six or i don't know three or something like that four maybe maybe you could say they didn't like the track you could find an excuse probably for any horse that uh, didn't do well you could probably make an excuse for it but we said the one or i said the one was the logical favor is going to be tough to beat it, it was actually a tougher race than i thought for sure that eight gave a good run if if you back that eight i wouldn't feel bad about it i would keep an eye on that horse i doubt i don't know if you'll get 13 to one uh but i mean that stretch run was pretty pretty interesting wouldn't a wouldn't a sure thing all right so what we got here so we got the five and the three, so three ended up coming in third. That was that intriguing horse with the, uh, pretty sure that was the one that, I didn't know its connections, but it had a hot jockey trainer combo. Um, 
And again, you would bet them based on the payouts, the probable payouts. Don't bet exactors and things like that what you think is going to happen if they're not offering value. If what you think is going to happen offers a lot of value and good payouts, heck yeah, go to those windows, fire away at those combinations. But mo most of the time, your most logical contenders aren't going to pay out everything because logical contenders – is what everybody else sees, and when everybody else sees the same things, you won't get paid for it. You got to look for, think outside the box and think different from the crowd because the crowd is who you're betting against, who you're wagering against. All right, so hopefully we, I wouldn't say we got lucky here because we had all horses underneath besides the seven horse, but we were pretty confident in the one. Uh, so hopefully that, you know, by doing that, this combination will pay more to justify putting all those horses underneath. If you like this video, hit like. I so appreciate you all tuning in and staying with me uh, watching this video and my other videos and investing the time and energy to, to watch these videos. Hopefully you're learning from it. Hopefully it's improving your handicapping. If you hadn't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Weekend Handicapping.